What is up guys, this is Tom, welcome back to another video. In this one, what I'm gonna be showing you is a really, really interesting lens. This is the Helios 44-2. It is an extremely old Russian lens. This lens is actually about sort of 38 years old. And what that means is that it's an extremely interesting challenge to shoot with. It's an entirely manual lens, so you're gonna be having to manually focus on your subject and also manually stop down your aperture, which we're just not used to nowadays on uh, sort of slightly more modern cameras. Cameras. But the trade-off for that means that we can get some extremely interesting bokeh in the background. These lenses actually supposedly have a defect, which means that the bokeh was sort of unintentionally swirly in the background. It's not apparently something that was intentional when they originally created the lens, but what it does mean is that it gives a sort of a really unique effect that most lenses, and especially modern lenses, will ever even come close to replicating. So this lens actually uses a Leica M mount, and that means you do need one of these sort of um, adapters to uh, bring it up to a slightly more modern mount. So I'm mounting this on my Sony a6500 using these one of the lens, ad these, uh, lens adapters. Now it's really, really cheap. Um, I think this cost me about 15 pounds, so probably about 15 to 20 dollars in the States. That just goes in your camera, allows you to sort of mount up to the Leica M from the uh, Sony E mount. And as you can see in shots and in videos, you do just get this sort of really interesting swirly bokeh. The lens stops down to, I believe, F, uh, F2. And that means you can get a really, really cool depth of field. The only challenge with this is that it is pretty hard to focus. Because it is a manual focus lens and down at that F2 number, uh, the depth of field is sort of really, really shallow. So it is extremely important that you do use your peaking right if you are using that. The plus side is that the focus ring is still extremely smooth, at least on my version. I have read online that some people have issues um, for, due to the age of the lens, but on mine, the uh, the focus is super, super smooth, meaning that in uh, photo and video, it's pretty easy for me to keep my, fo uh, my subject in focus, even easier if I'm on a gimbal, because you can just sort of move in and out. It's a technique that we don't have to use a lot nowadays because uh, the auto focusing on these cameras is so good, but having to switch it up and use a manual focus lens like this every so often is actually really good practice. Now, using a lens like this on the crop sensor cameras is also a bit of a challenge in itself because of the focus focal length. So this is a 58 millimeter lens on a full frame camera and that means that we have to sort of multiply that by uh, about a 50% crop factor on uh, my a6500 or uh, that might be a slightly different number for different cameras. But that means that the focal length of this lens on my camera brings it up to around an 85 mil. Now that is extremely close unless you're sort of shooting portraits with the dedicated focus of uh, or of shooting those portraits. If you're trying to do sort of candid photography, street photography, that 85 mil is gonna be a little bit of a challenge. But again, a challenge in a good way, and the results can still be extremely effective. You are just gonna to wanna to make sure that your focus, peak, uh, focus peaking is pretty much on point uh, on your camera because uh, as I say the focus is a bit of a challenge on a lens like this. But hey this is a photography and a filmmaking channel so why am I even talking about this in the first place and that's because it's an extremely interesting lens to shoot with. It's an extremely interesting and it's extremely cheap. You can pick up these lenses for pretty much under about the $50 mark. That is basically a no-brainer even if it's going to help you get sort of uh, a few more shots in your project that maybe are going to be look a little bit different. It's not a run and gun lens, it's not going to be a one size fits all, but it is going to help you sort of expand your capability from your camera and achieve a look that you might not have been able to otherwise. Hope you have enjoyed that guys and maybe you know about an option that you didn't know about before in terms of a little prime lens that is going to sort of give you another tool in your filmmaking kit. I hope you have enjoyed some of the samples from this video. All of the sort of b-roll and photography was shot entirely using the 44-2 unless of course it is showing the lens in the video. So let me know your thoughts on this lens down below in the comments and I will catch you next time.